I do pray with Mary, and I put myself in a, a, a wooded glen, and there's a bench there, and um, Mary and I are just sitting there on the bench together, talking. And um, I, I just um, talk to her about the different aspects of her life and all that she went through. It's just a very powerful, powerful experience that I revisit a lot of times in prayer. Welcome to Sharing Our Marianist Stories. I'm Patty Garrett. And I'm Sister Gabby Bebo. Well, once again, we're excited to present today's podcast to you all, which is an interview that we recorded in July 2017 with Ann Hirt and Carol Ramey. Some of you may know Carol Ramey as the previous director of NACMIS. This was recorded probably about nine months after she stepped down. She retired from being the director of NACMIS, but both of them are life, pretty much lifelong members of the Marianist Visitation State community and other Marianist communities. Uh, Patty, you're the one who interviewed them. What were your thoughts listening back on this interview that you did? Well, I really enjoyed this. Probably one of the easiest interviews ever because we sort of based this, we had the option of doing it like StoryCorps, like NPR does, where people interview each other. And that's what Ann and Carol wanted to do, was interview each other, mostly Ann interviewing Carol. Um, but I do remember, you could see the love and faith that they share. You know, they've been through a lot together as um, members of you know, this Marianist Lake community, the state visitation community, and uh, just listening to their friendship, uh, it was just endearing at the time and even more so now. For those of you who don't know, the Marianist Visitation State community is a lay community in the United States. They take a vow of stability every year, and they really see as their vocation supporting the lay branch of the family. Now, the Visitation State community, they're all over the United States, so they gather in person twice a year. So because of that, many of them have local communities. And Onawim in Cincinnati, that was one of their communities that Carol and Ann belonged to. I've heard Carol tell lots of stories about the Onawim community, the work they did as young people. This is when they were single and then they were getting married and having children and still trying to uh, make a big difference in the community they lived. So when they talk, you can hear humor, but they're also honest about the reality that things were hard. Sometimes there was schisms within the community. It wasn't easy. And I think, again, that's where their faith came in. They have just had such faith that was driving them and that it was more than them and that they could lean on. And they also talk a lot about Mary. When Carol talks about Mary, she, it welcomes other people in to that relationship. She's the first person I heard really take Mary off the pedestal and talk to her as a companion. And I think Anne's the one that asked her to share her relationship with Mary. Well, and then Gabby, how was it for you to listen to this story of at this point, it is 50 years. They said it was 48 or 49, but this 50-year commitment to each other and the Marianist family and the state community. I was really inspired by their commitment and how they've stuck with it. I think that there's, there's a lot of growth that can happen in a person and in a community when they when you really decide to commit to something and to stick with that, even throughout difficult times. And, and I was glad that she, that she mentioned some of those difficult times. I hope that other lay Marianists listening to this can learn from that and also be inspired to deepen in their commitment. Well, we hope that you enjoy listening to this podcast. And so here is Carol Ramey and Ann Heert.
I'm Anne Westendorf Heert, and I have been part of the Marianist family for 50 plus years, I think. Um, my name is Carol Ramey. Um, I, too, have been with uh, the Marianist family uh, for about as long as I can remember. You know, they, as soon as I got to UD, it was just a, a matter of days before I was invited, you know, to get involved. And I said yes. <laughs> so, And you continue to say yes, Carol. <laughs> so we were, we were talking a little bit about um, who was the f- first Marianist who, you know, invited invited you or how you got involved with the Marianist and the we had a sodality at UD. Sister Mary Louise, I think, was the first person that had invited me. And um, it, it was v- very soon after I arrived on campus, and uh, she and I just ran into each other on the sidewalk, and we started talking, and she said, would you like to, you know, get more in- interested or uh, involved in some of these things? And I said, why not? You know, because, because I was 17 years old and, you know, I thought it would just be a way to make friends and know more people. I, I was a commuter student at the University of Dayton back in 1965. You were, and I, and so you were a sophomore when I started. And you were, you were, you were like a, an RA, what, resident? I was an RA, yeah. On, on one of the floors in, in Mary Crest, yeah. Yeah. And you were, you taught, I, I always thought Carol had, she, you were, I always looked up to you, Carol. <laughs> and, um, and so we did, in a way, I think I, we must have met when, when I was 17 and you were 18 or something, or, yeah. or 18 and 19 maybe. But um, we were both involved in the sodality. And, and really, we've been involved in communities together for a long, long time. We were involved in the Onawam community in Cincinnati, in the... I'm trying to think in the 80s, I know. I mean, we were involved in this, in the, we've been involved in the Visitation State community for, for close to 50, we're not quite 50 years yet, maybe 40, 48 years. I'm not sure how many, but. The state community is peopled by persons that have decided that this is an ongoing, lifelong commitment. And so we take a vow together. And uh, we have two retreats a year. Um, so we don't spend a lot of time face to face with one another. It's just twice a year that we meet, but there's a lot of ways that we found to interconnect. You know, especially with technology. Yeah, with now. The technology has really um, been good. Like I said, we just get together twice a year. So our primary focus, I think, is on our local community, and the state community is in support of the vow that we take. So. Uh, the retreats that we have generally are on themes that to help us to look at the vow or to to choose why we have you know what we've done to try and um, be stable in that commitment or develop that commitment or invite people or you know so and how we live it out and how, how we live it out yeah, and, sure. and 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 a lot of it's building community mm-hmm. wherever we we go but then also being faithful to a spiritual a, a, a spirit, a deep spiritual life as well. Right, yeah. I, but we, when we take our vow, we don't. We all have an individual. Uh, what should I say? Expression. We, expression. We have a vow ceremony once a year, but it's not. Everybody doesn't say the same thing. You know, yeah, we, we have a common a prayer at the beginning, and then yeah. there's a sentence that we begin at. I commit myself. Commit myself uh, in the spirit of Mary. And then we say what it is at that time in our life that we are particularly working on that uh, we feel like the vow um, uh, impels us to act, you know. Uh, and I think a number of people who have been in the Visitation State community have, have really made conscious choices to build the larger family of Mary, uh, uh, the, the larger lay family with them. Um, I think of a Tony Garasha and a Marge Cavanaugh and Beth Garasha and Joe Cavanaugh, who really put a lot of effort into what we see today. I mean, I, 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 I know there. I'm not saying they were the only ones who who started something like the big assembly that we have, but they put an awful lot of energy into that. And then other members have put an energy into the international um, um, lay Marianist community. You were talking about some of the other Marianists who influenced you. Carol, you know, some of the other, uh, I mean, you did say to me there were lots of lay Marianists throughout the years oh, yeah. who have influenced you. 
Very, very many. I mean, I think of a Joe Cavanaugh, who is now deceased, and a Marge Cavanaugh. Oh, and Marge, Marge is Marge head of our community now. They were our teachers, really. Mm -hmm. they, they were really well steeped in, in Marianist history, Marianist spirituality, and uh, they were our teachers in many, many ways. They really read well, they widely, studied. just they brilliant studied. and very brilliant people, and so committed to, to building the lake. The lay family of Mary. Yes, I mean, yes. oh my goodness, very, very much leaders, wouldn't you say? Oh, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's some sacrifice to their lives. You know, they. Um, I mean, they both were uh, brilliant people and um, led pretty, pretty uh, uh, challenging jobs. You know, uh, but they they still made room for all of this Marianist work and. They were just very good at it. <laughs> so, yeah. what was your big um, outreach? Was it when you were on a whim? Uh, Pat O'Brien was a woman I that, that that we got to know um, who was uh, profoundly disabled, but she had spirit. You just and drive and humor. She was a, an amazing woman, and the community worked very hard to incorporate her into the community as best we could, given her limitations. And the, the story we tell is about the time we decided to go on a camping trip, and she said, "I want to go," and we're thinking, "Oh, how are we going to do this?" And anyway, she she did bring her attendant with her, but um, when it came came time for her to go to bed. She said, she said, now, you do know that the head doesn't go down into the, the sleeping bag, you know? Oh. <laughs> you know she, was, she was worried that we were going to put her in there back, backwards, oh, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, Pat was a, a wonderful person, and a lot of the people in the community did all kinds of things to support her and um, her isolation, you know, that her disability uh, put on her, and uh, it, it was just a wonderful experience. And for our, our children, too. Our children. I remember wheeling Pat around in a wheelchair, and she was holding our my daughter, your goddaughter, Debbie, in, in her lap. lap yeah. um, and you were especially close to Pat, and yeah. you were deeply moved by her and by when she passed away, too. Yeah, it you was were hard. It was very hard. there. And, yeah. yeah. And you had a van, I think. I mean, just getting her in and out of the car with yeah, her we wheelchair. Would, we would take her in the van just about everywhere we could. We It, it was a big van, and... Uh, uh, my husband at the time had uh, made planks oh, like so that we so that we could push the the wheelchair up into the van, and then we had blocks, you know, to stabilize it. And so we took her uh, a lot of places with us, you know, uh, mostly to church, but uh, we also like the camping trip, you know. And we would do special things with her too. So that was a, a really big part of Ottawa for a long time was, was attending to her. So. And then we, we had talked about Onawam housing, and I, I, I think we may have left town around the time that it was started, but I, but I know Gail Miller got really involved in it, in it, and um, I think it was housing in, in, in northern Kentucky, yes. and um, it, 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 it took a lot of energy. Um, another thing that we were involved in was visiting Lebanon Correctional Institution yes. um, with Mark Schmieder. We go to the prison for mass, and that was quite, a, a, quite an experience. And Onawam is still around. I mean, Onawam is, is strong still. It's I mean, a long standing community, yeah. yeah. So, I know Carol, you you have given many many talks over the years to so many different groups. We were talking about who Mary is for you, and and what's your relationship like with Mary. I was saying I don't I, I don't think I personally pray pray to Mary the way I wish I I. I did, and that's probably something I need to say yes to. But I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you, how you relate to Mary, and you imagine yourself. I think you had mentioned you imagine yourself sitting on a bench with sitting Mary. Yeah, I just, I when I do, I do pray with Mary, and I um, put myself in a, a a wooded glen, and there's a bench there, and um, Mary and I are just sitting there on the bench together, talking, and. Um, I I just um, talk to her about the different aspects of her life, you know, with her son and all that she went through. You know, you can go through the list of all the mysteries, and um, there's just every one of those stories is just really profound. And her role 
uh, with her son was just um, it, just it really was part of my spiritual life all along the way because I just kept thinking about um, how she it, throughout her son's life how she, she found ways to stay um, in touch with him and I think still continue to guide him in some ways and and learn from him and um, and then of course the at the end you know her standing at the foot of the cross has just it still moves me to tears you know that it's um, you just can't imagine the horror of watching your own son you know suffer like that and uh, die so uh, it's just a very powerful powerful experience that I revisit a lot of times in prayer so so how do you think being members of the Marianist family supports your relationship and friendship now? Well, I just can't imagine life without it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's that strong. I mean, it's, some of it is the um, the personal relationships that we've built out over the years. The friendships are really strong. And, um, well, my mom, mom just recently passed away about six weeks ago. And, and you know, just just the support and the messages just really loving and supportive of of each other. And we, we've all gone through difficult times, um, every single one of us, I would say. And, and, I, you know, and I think it's uh, pretty amazing, I mean, because we don't see that much of each other, really, you know? I mean, we, we our local communities are important to us and our families are, community, you know, and so mm -hmm. we have lots of parts of our lives, so... Um, but this is an element that is just very strong and powerful. And even though it is the the time we spend together or the the ways we spend time together are, you know, few and far between, it's it works. You know, we stayed together. So, and and I have to say, you know, it wasn't all blissful. You know, there were times where the the community um, was on the verge of falling apart, and some people did leave the community. You know, we had some disagreements over the vow and the meaning of the vow. And uh, so it wasn't all, you know, peaches and cream. <laughs> you know? It was hard work. We ran into some rough spots. So it's, I mean, to me, it's been a struggle in some ways to stay involved. You know, I didn't always want to go to retreats. You know, I, I, I'm kind of an introvert. I, so, but, it, but I know it's something that was, I, I was called to do. And I guess it's, I guess we said yes, right? And sometimes saying yes is pretty tough. <laughs> well, and the thing we make a joke about, but I mean, women tend to live longer than the men do. And so at some point, we came up with this thing about that when we all get old, we're going to have this house together and it's going to be the home for tired women. <laughs> Yeah, that was the name of it, you know. And, and so, and so, none of us are there yet, but uh, the day may be quickly approaching. We've been, talk we've been talking about it since maybe the seventies, I think. <laughs> Millie, we we've have. been tired for a long time. <laughs> <We have. laughs> but, uh, no, but um, but uh, it is a, a nice image to think that. You know, we've gone through so much life together that in old age we would hope we could stay connected in some way too, that we don't get separated into dispersed nursing homes and never see each other again, you know, that sort of okay, thing. Okay, so. which one are you going to, Carol, so I can sign up? Probably Trinity. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to thank you because I was hoping more of this would happen and you can just sense the friendship and you can tell there's more than just friendship. You know, there is that, whatever that spiritual component is. Yeah. You can feel it, and I think that's yeah, what we have a common bond that is, you know, is deeper than just you know friendship. Yeah, it's so. love. It's love, respect, and care. For more information about NACMIS, please check our website at www.nacmis.org. You'll find publications, resources, and all of our past podcasts. So thank you for listening.